Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. And wow, it's been a long time since we last spotted Ant-Man, <laughs> along with the Wasp, since Avengers Endgame, which came out in 2019. Yes, and that's before the pandemic came around. <laughs> Go figure. Anyway... We did have the first two Ant-Man film franchises as part of Phase 3 of the MCU, yeah, Marvel Cinematic Universe. But now, he's back in the third installment, simply called Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, which is now the first installment in Phase 5 of MCU. <laughs> So now we're getting something cooking here. Because <laughs> phase four is finally over. Yeah, probably the weakest link of them all. But there's some good ones that came. Anyway, <laughs> this time Scott Lane teaming up with his now teenage daughter, Cassie, along with his girlfriend, Hope Van Dyne as well as her family, Hank Pine and Janet Van Dyne, as they wound up being trapped inside the quantum realm, where Janet was actually trapped for a very long time, and she had a traumatic experience as they try to face against Cain the Conqueror, yes, the new evil villain in the story. It stars Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly, Jonathan Majors, as you may have spotted him in Devotion and just recently Creed Free. Yes, which is part of the Creed franchise as a spinoff to the Rocky franchise. Yeah, so it's nice to see that he's getting much work. Uh, in his career, so I think he's also indeed a newcomer. Catherine Newton, as you may spotted her in films like Freaky, as well as Pokemon Detective Pikachu, and yes, Paranormal Activity 4. Yeah, terrible sequel, as we know. Yeah, she was the annoying blonde girl, as I mentioned. <laughs> now she's no longer annoying anymore. She's more tough and vulnerable and caring and loving. <laughs> okay, you get the idea. David uh, Dasmachian, Katie O'Brien, Bill Murray, yes, Bill Murray, the legendary comedian, yeah, who's been in a lot of movies, yeah, like Ghostbusters, Groundhog Day as well as Meatballs. Of course, he was a former Saturday Night Live cast member. So on and so forth. <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer. Yes, Michelle Pfeiffer. Batman Returns. Grease 2. Scarface. Um, the Fabulous Baker Boys. Uh, you name it. <laughs> Corey Stahl, who we last saw him in the first Ant-Man, and I know he was in the, the TV series that was on Netflix called House of Cards. Yeah. Michael Douglas, yes, Michael Douglas, legendary actor, who's in movies like Falling Down, The Game, The Star Chamber. He was in the TV series... Um, the Streets of San Francisco. Um, yeah, he was even in movies like Romancing the Stone, The Jewel of the Nile, The War of the Roses. Um, don't say a word. Um, many others that he's done in his career. Um, Randall Park, Jimmy Woo. Oh, sorry. Randall Park, Greg... Uh, Took a 10. Yeah. Mark Oliver Everett. This time they got Run Ryder instead of the rest. I mean, even Paul Rudd didn't write this. I'm surprised. He should have. 
but it's written by Jeff Loveness, who's actually a comedy writer for Jimmy Kimball Live. But he also did Rick and Morty and so on. <laughs> and it's directed by Peyton Reed, who of course have done all of the Ant-Man movies together. And yes, he did direct it, Bring It On. So on. <laughs> The movie begins set in the quantum realm. Janet Van Dyne, played by Michelle Pfeiffer, has been stuck in entrapment for about several days, maybe perhaps over a month or a year, who knows, till suddenly she encounters an exiled traveler who just crash landed in the quantum realm named Kane, played by Jonathan Majors, who we soon learn that he's actually the conqueror, you know, battling Earth, destroying them between several multiverse of any kind. So there'll be like millions, billions, zillions of people who are being attacked. And that's where Janet discovers that she doesn't trust them, even though they're about to head back home where they belong, on Earth. So at this rate, she ends up battling him, trapping him, and was ready to escape. So that kind of led to a lot of traumatic experience that she had. Meanwhile, back on Earth, after the events of Endgame with the Avengers, everything that was going around when they were trying to fight against Thanos after what he did to the rest of the other Avengers and the rest of the other people mostly have been involved. Yeah, because of the, uh, the gauntlet that happened in Infinity War. Scott Lane played by Paul Rudd, has become a successful memorist, a novelist from his own, and has been living happily with his girlfriend, Hope Van Dyne, played by Evangeline Lilly, which at this point on, you know, everything was just going great. You know, everyone knows him. I mean, he did once work at Baskin Robbins, yeah, before he got fired. Of course, he's a petty criminal, as he was, especially with his best friend, Lewis, played by uh, Michael Pena, which I know we last saw him in the first two movies. And sadly, he's not in this one. I wish he came back, because I always love it when he tells it like it is. You know, going back and forth to the actual story, he tells the truth, <laughs> for sure. Anyway. Scott's now teenage daughter, Cassie, played by Kathleen Noonan, so he's no longer a little girl anymore, has somehow became a political activist, so she's getting into bigger trouble, just like how Scott was when he was a criminal, resulting in having a very strained relationship together. <laughs> Especially the, the moment, too, where... She wants up in jail, and then she ends up uh, shrinking the police car. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Anyway, while visiting Hope's parents, uh, Hank Pine, played by Michael Douglas and Janet, Cassie reveals that she's been working on a device that can establish the contact of the quantum realm. But that kind of leads to Janet feeling very panicky because she had a traumatic experience over there and told her to shut it off but then suddenly went but suddenly the device went completely wrong was when the message has been received resulting in a portal that opens up and then the rest of them had sucked into the quantum realm into this very strange world kind of like the movie strange world from Disney, where everything isn't exactly what it seems. 
soon they're being trapped by all these very creepy, um, very goofy uh, natives going around, and and they even force them to drink the ooze that looks like blood, but it looks almost like uh, boot punch right there. Maybe uh, some some more like candy red. Um, kind of punch that they had <laughs> so, but they the reason they had to drink that is so that way they'd be able to contact with these natives here and there so now they rebelled against the ruler Gentora who's of course running the entire world right here and she's played by Katie O'Brien yeah and since um, the natives themselves known as the freedom fighters you actually have a character who's a telepathic named Quiz, played by William Jackson Harper, who basically reads minds and the light glows from his forehead. So he begins to, to read their minds about what they're thinking here and there, and they know about what's going on, so on. <laughs> yeah. And then you have this alien-like creature who's I, I think he's an alien but it looked like a gelatin uh, there's even this one moment um, like towards the climax where he, he had eventually all these holes on his body because he got shot and then suddenly he sucks the life out of those uh, he becomes a giant too of all these bad guys I thought that was <laughs> very clever and hilarious at the same time. Um, anyway, this strange creature um, eventually goes around um, just cleaning the, the ooze from their mouths because <laughs> they just drank the whole thing so they also communicate. Yeah, so you get a lot of these kind of characters. Joining in with Hulk, Janet, and Pime who was in another part of the world here trying to spell out some answers of what's going on. So anyway, and this is where it leads to because, you know, both Scott and Cassie are already, you know, trapped inside. Hope, Janet, and Pime have met Lower Quiler, who's played by Bill Murray, who happens to be a former friend of Janet's which then reveals the secret about what's going on because fortunately things have changed after she left because they used to they used to like um, hang out together sometimes they fight against all these other bad guys here and there so on and so forth um, not to mention they pretty much saved their lives here and there But then all of a sudden he's now working for Kane. Yeah, that's a shocker. Who's now the quantum realm uh, ruler? So he's joining in with all these uh, soldiers around. Yeah, the ones that are wearing these uh, bluish glass shield visors, and they're just going around attacking them. So they escape. They stole a Kryler ship. This is a ship where Hank eventually had trouble with where he tries to like well Janet eventually tells him to by putting his hands straight into this ooey gooey uh, controls so now he's under control to escape so now they'll try to be able to find Scott and Cassie and that's where Janet explains about what happened while she was in the quantum realm when she met Cain because Cain had just went too far as we speak because he is indeed now the conqueror you know ruling the entire universe and destroying people attacking them and soon um, he had, he eventually had event and soon he would eventually have found them, but he also was ready to trap 
Scott and Cassie and then next thing you know we found who of course was the main villain in the first movie of Ant-Man uh, Darren Cross yeah played by Corey Stahl yeah who was of course a former protege of Hank Pine is now known as Modoc. So eventually, you just have the the entire head of Darren all stretched out, and now he's inside this this one suit that he has. So he's under control, all um, subatomic size. Well, this character is like <laughs> totally full of it. But soon, uh, well, you know how this cliche goes, because soon this character who was evil will soon now become, well, a hero at this point. So he'll probably end up helping him out, but at this rate, he's the kind of guy you'll never trust, because he's going to still attack. So he'll be part of um, King the Conqueror's uh, minion, in a way. Anyway... Scott eventually um, had a deal for Kane to actually try to find a way to to find the multiversal power core in order for him to get back to Earth where he belongs, which at this rate he's going to end up destroying it. That's why Janet couldn't trust him. So, because it's already been broken into pieces, all, you know destroyed he was he wanted to have Scott to as to go all the way straight to the power core just so he'll be able to let his daughter Cassie go but unfortunately he broke his promises and then when he went inside that core that's where we get to see multiple versions of of Scott <laughs> and I mean like multiple versions even when he was wearing the Ant-Man suit and we also learned that Cassie has a suit too very similar to Hope's so yeah she's the wasp but a different kind of wasp <laughs> yeah and then of course Hope was ready to to save Scott to join in with uh, Janet and Hank which soon um, they got trapped and they were attacked by all of uh, Kane's um, soldiers and soon uh, they just trapped um, Janet around in this one particular um, one particular um, ship or castle too for sure anyway Yes, there was multi versions of him, even one where he was working at <laughs> Basket Robbins. So, like, you begin to see what was going on in the past through the present. So, so this was going to be difficult for him trying to get all the way on top of it. So, they, they tend to help out. Everyone started falling around. And then Hope eventually showed up. We saw multi versions of her, too. And now <laughs> they're all together, they're all safe, and now they're ready to escape. But it does continue to go on as the battle folds when Cain the Conqueror takes over and ready to, uh, to plan on the attack and also trap um, yeah, the ruler of the Quantum Realm, yes, the female ruler. Who's um, who's uh, who also runs um, the entire world, and and now they're ready for a huge fight, a huge battle with Ant Man, the Wasp, along with Hank and Janet, as they also revealed all of his ants, giant ants now. <laughs> And all the rest of those uh, goofy natives 
and then they're going to go around for a big battle before hopefully they'll be able to get back home safe and sound but it's not going to be easy once they try to stop Cain yeah I'm going to leave it at that and I would say though well not as good as the first two movies but that's okay it's still an enjoyable movie to, for the uh, MCU and also the entire um, many franchises to follow. But it was really nice to see them. Maybe the writing could have been a bit better at times here and there. I can live with the pacing. I can also live with the way the story folds. But I guess maybe they could have tried a little bit better, but that's fine. I can live with that. Um, it's kind of nice to see that um, we get to see you know, Paul Rudd reprising his role. And he does an excellent job. I mean, even though he's basically just having the best time of his life, everything just seems like every. Like, everything's just going back to normal ever since, you know, he was the Avenger. You know, he saved the world along with them. So now everything was back to the way it was. So, like, he wanted to have a happy life with his girlfriend and his daughter, even though nothing is what it seems. <laughs> but nevertheless, yeah, he's going to make it up for it. Um... And it's really Janet's story in a way because, you know, Janet's been going through a lot of traumatic experience uh, while she was in the quantum realm. I mean, having to face against uh, Kane and try to fight back against him. But then no matter what she does, you know, she just ran away trying to escape, never to be hurt again. But now everyone else is starting to talk about what happened because now Kane is just going completely insane, totally nuts. And now he becomes the ruler to destroy many worlds here. Um, but performance-wise, um, I thought um, it's great to see. I thought Catherine Noonan uh, did a great job portraying uh, Cassie. I mean, it's nice to see that she's now becoming as tough and vulnerable, just like uh, his girlfriend, Hope. So now, yeah, she gets to use the suits, and yeah, she even gets to shrink and also become a giant, just like what Ant-Man was doing, too. Whenever he used that device, you know, he becomes... <laughs> Sometimes he'll become this small, and then later he'll become this big as a giant. And yes, and there was a moment where where he ends up uh, <laughs> trying to fight against uh, Cain for sure when he's a giant and he's like destroying all the uh, the soldiers and everything around the ships because you know Cain just broke his promise as a deal to actually try to get him back home if if his daughter is safe yeah and it was also nice because you know they all team up together and they battle against him along with the rest of his army and so on <laughs> um anyway it, it's also nice to see um evangeline lily reprise her role as hope Joining in with Michael Douglas as Hank Pine and Michelle Pfeiffer as uh, Janet Van Dyne. And of course, it was nice to see Corey Stoll. Kind of pointless, but of course, now we have to find out what happened to him as Mordock. <laughs> and it's like. Like, you know exactly how that goes. I mean, he goes from evil to nice and all that. To annoying. But he is indeed Darren. 
And there's a lot of jokes, as usual, in all these MCUs. You know, there's always going to be some punchlines here and there. That's probably going to be as memorable as you can be. <laughs> yeah. Can't forget the, the moment when, <laughs> you know, both um, Scott and Darren were fighting together, you know, as Ant-Man and his own suit, too. And, and they just attack each other, especially inside uh, Cassie's bedroom in that scene. I mean, if you never forget that moment, I mean, that was just hilarious. But a perfect battle, too. <laughs> I saw it. Either way, um, it's great to see this entire cast again here and there. I mean, I'm glad they're still reprising their roles. And I'm glad they're still with us, for sure. Either way, um, it's great to see this entire cast again here and there. I mean, I'm glad they're still reprising their roles. And I'm glad they're still with us, for sure. And, but most of all, um, Jonathan Majors is just terrific. I think this is indeed his new coming role that he's going for, because with his other films that he's been doing lately, recently, with Devotion and Creed Free, he's terrific in this role as the villain. And it really shows his incredible acting ability. So th this is a very stellar performance I've ever saw. And this is basically the the darkest of all the of all three of the Ant Man movies too. This is more darker than, even though it's still funny at times and and all this other stuff. It's always nice that they went for a more darker vibe and more serious. I had to say this though for the cameos of Bill Murray, who only gets like a a five minute cameo as Lord Kryler. That was a waste. Like, once again, why do they always keep wasting on Bill Murray? You know, the last time I saw a cameo appearance that was done right was Ghostbusters Afterlife. And I thought that was done so well compared to what they've been dealing with him in other films, including that Ghostbusters 2016 that we had you know, several years back. I mean, come on, man. Bill Murray deserved better than this. That was, That's one thing I didn't like, what, what they treated him in this film. And we never saw him again, too. That's, that sucks. Yeah, they just... Yeah, Janet eventually just um, let out this one creature to attack um, Lord Kryler and the rest of, the, of Kane's um, soldiers. Yeah. Just so they can escape, because after all... It's like, it's just the kind of character you can't trust. Um, yeah, I do wish that uh, Michael Pena had came back again. I mean, a few characters were back, but I still wish he came back. Because <laughs> I always wonder what happened to him, too. Um, of course, the special effects are incredible, as usual. I mean, no doubt about it. Um, I mean, it's also so nice to see some other characters that you kind of get in touch with. I mean, especially with this uh, female ruler of Quantum Realm. And I thought that that female right there is, is terrific. Yeah, she almost kind of resembles to Michelle Rodriguez a little bit, too. Who's the Freedom Fighters, actually. Um, yeah, the rest of the, the entire natives are Freedom Fighters. Um, and the leader, too. So her name is Gentora Katie O'Brien, the Freedom Fighter. They team up to join in with uh, Ant-Man, the Wasp, and the, the whole entire group of the army to, to stop Kane. So, nevertheless, um, it's already becoming the, a box office success. So far, so good. And it's going to go pretty strong over the weekends so check it out for sure um, you won't be disappointed so anyway that's Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania and I give the movie four stars
I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.